two, three. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my porch in Pacific Grove, California. Um, wish we were out somewhere in the world racing bikes, but in the meantime, we've had a lot of time at home to tackle some projects we've been meaning to get around to. Uh, I personally found that to be helpful as I look forward to, uh, to the future and to getting back to what it is I like to do. Um, I've had a nice time at home to work on a project that I've been meaning to get around to. So um, without further ado, I'd like to show you my new toolbox. A lot of folks have asked um, to see it with a little more explanation. So here it is, uh, not here, but within. The goal with this new box um, was to create something a little bit smaller that I could leave in Europe when we're, when we're traveling uh, across to World Cups. Um, that way I don't have to bring my tools with me every time and can uh, have a set of tools there and a set of tools at home. And because when we're in Europe, we have team resources, including a big truck with a lot of the tools that I kept in my big box, um, I've been able to consolidate some of those into a smaller package that we can store easily and also affords me a little more workbench space uh, when it's open and spread out. So um, the previous box, which was wonderful, uh, was a Pelican 1560 case. It has wheels and a handle and it rolls very nice uh, across the airport, but um, if that was too difficult, not carry nothing at all. So this is now a Pelican 1450 case. It's, as you saw, considerably smaller than the previous one. Uh, and I'll take you for a little tour now. Um, so many of you have seen it. Oh, have seen it already. We'll start with my favorite tool. Why not? It jumped out of the box at us. Um, normally I wouldn't travel with the lid uh, as such, but um, we turn it upside down so that things stay put. This is one of my favorite tools of all time. It's a Knipex plier wrench. It expands with parallel jaws to be basically the size of any open-end box wrench you would uh, normally find a need for on a bicycle. Uh, it does it all. It's one tool. It saves a lot of space. Um, that one's a no-brainer, and I recommend that to anyone who works on anything. Um, you'll notice underneath, and this is true in a few pockets uh, in my box, there are some hidden tools where, uh, in this case, it's a little spoke that I've been as a grabbing tool for internal cable routing and that sort of thing. Uh, to reach up in those hard to reach spaces where my fingers don't fit to pull things through. So um, my general school of thought is to try to use the top layers for the tools that are most often used. Um, in this case, a few concessions have been made to fit larger tools that may not fit uh, below. One of those is the hammer. Uh, I promise, Kate, I don't uh, hit your bike with the hammer more than I use other tools, but it is here. It is a beautiful and high quality tool that I like to show off. And uh, so it has a prominent feature uh, at the top of my box. The rest of these are tools I use constantly. First one here, tire pressure gauge. This is a Topeak uh, Maxis branded that's a sponsor. Topeak is also a sponsor and they make a really high quality tire pressure gauge that works for Schrader and Presta. So um, that's a good one. Good one to have handy always. Same with the tape measure. That's the self-explanatory one. We do a lot of checking and rechecking, um, as well as just measuring things around the team layout to make sure that our tables and our space within the team tent is also appropriate. Um, maybe the favorite tool of them all, and the one I like to use the most, bottle opener. It's an Abbey Tool Special, of course. It also has two little slots. Those are disc rotor truing slots. Um, but you'll see they've never been used, but the bottle opener has. So you tell me which one's more important. Um, another fun tool, just like all the other tools, PB Swiss Dental Pick. That's uh, one of the best dental picks uh, you could find, probably nicer than the one your dentist uses. Um, two that are always in my pocket on race day. These are fun tools in general. They're pretty cute and real handy. It's the Abbey Tools 4-Way tool. The bits that you get in them can be customized uh, with Abbey. You can order however you want them to be. I have a 3, 4, 5, 6 millimeter Allen and a T10, 20, 25, and 30 Torx uh, version here. And so uh, those are in my pocket during races and uh, usually in my hand when I'm working on the bikes. They're awesome. Um, one thing I have found compared to my old box uh, is that I almost never use screwdrivers anymore. Um, so I have only one large one. It's a flat blade. Uh, it's a PB Swiss one. I really don't use it as a screwdriver, but more to pry brake pads open that have maybe been squeezed slightly uh, with the front wheel out. And 
maybe occasionally for non-bicycle related things uh, I do use it but I've gotten rid of I think gosh five of six large screwdrivers from my previous box the only other two screwdrivers are the very small flat and Phillips head which um, are used mostly for like opening electronic battery uh, cases and things like that it's almost never uh, seen on a bike anymore a, a screwdriver uh, type bolt so um, another one I don't use too much but fit nicely uh, in a small space is a little chainring bolt tool that's for the back sides of chainring bolts you need to hold still when you're trying to loosen the front which when loctited sometimes is difficult so that makes a feature there uh, the allen wrenches these are my favorites gold plated they're PB Swiss they're in a Topeak carrier because Topeak's allen carrier is a one and a half to eight which are the only sizes I need uh, the original one had a 10 millimeter which I don't carry because of the space that I was trying to conserve so consolidated it down to just one and a half mil through eight which serves every function I need it to um, in addition to that a little PB Swiss uh, rainbow torque set these are uh, a 6 through a 25 in the most frequently seen sizes. To be honest, I've never used a T9 or a T7, but the others are useful. And those correspond also to, uh, in the top lid layer, I've also included sets of bits. And to conserve space, more tools accept bits rather than the full length, full size tool um, in each of these you know, formats. So this is a little ratcheting little ratcheting tool, it's a Topeak tool. This is great for little things like brake bolts um, to mount the caliper quickly. It's a wonderful little time saver and a space saver, so win-win. Uh, additionally, this is kind of what can become every screwdriver size I need, plus a bit driver for Allen and Torx headed stuff. It all uses the same bits I've stuffed in the foam here, so it becomes a screwdriver or it becomes a longer finger than I have to reach bolts that are kind of hard to access. So it's a simple and easy one. It's on a socket, so you can kind of make things as long or as short as you need to. Um, clever and compact, that's what I like, uh, especially for this project. Here we have also maybe my favorite tool in the top lid. This is the Topeak D-Torque. Uh, it's a digital torque wrench. It's very small, up to 20 Newton meters. That's 19.99 is where it rolls over to zero again. So that's every suspension bolt pivot on my bike. Um, as well as all the cockpit controls and everything else. Um, if you want to be a little bit more quick and dirty, another fun feature are these three, four, five, and six preset torque bits, which fit into, for example, my ratchet. So now my ratchet has become a four millimeter, or rather a four newton meter uh, torque wrench, and it gives you the torque uh, kind of click sensation when you hit four newton meters and you can put that in any of the tools in here, including what's called the Topeak Nano Bar. Uh, it's a Nano Torque Bar Deluxe, and it uh, accepts the same bits, um, and is just a lever to kind of add some torque uh, to whatever bit you're applying it to. So, some fun features up here, and that basically covers something like 80% of what day-to-day -day stuff uh, I do to these bikes, and then for what's in the next layer, uh, we have, you know, a flashlight. It's pretty self-explanatory, useful for many things. Knipex housing cutter, Knipex diagonal cutter. So that's good for cable housing, um, zip ties. Who knows? Uh, this is specifically for shift housing. And last but not least, this one is a flush cutting tool that I use basically just for zip ties. These are all Knipex products. They're super high quality, really well engineered, and. Uh, I get my stuff in America from KC Tool. It's an online distributor for German and Swiss tools. So if you're into tools, that's a good person to associate with. Hiding below, last but not least, uh, in this section, pin spanner. I don't usually use it for what it's intended, but it, it actually works well as a way to pinch bar tape to a road handle bar while you're taping the bars and hold it there. Um, I've been doing that since I was a kid, and I keep one of these in all my toolboxes because I find that to be such a cheater way of wrapping handlebars that I can't do it any other way anymore. Um, scissors, I think we all know about. Uh, useful also, not just in the bathroom, but also on bikes is a pair of tweezers. Uh, these are actually Knipex tweezers as well, so they're extremely high quality and very precise. And um, I like to keep them inserted this way because it protects the ends and keeps it from getting bent. So with something very small and precise like tweezers, you don't want to have any 
distortion or bending occur. So that's what's nice about the foam too. In general, I use Kaizen foam inserts. Um, you know, obviously the, the quality of execution can be quite good. And, you know, not only does it make for a nice presentation, but it protects the tools when they're not in use also, which is important when precision is uh, a factor. So <clears throat> moving on to the next layer, speaking of precision being a factor, uh, these are tools that are maybe used less often, but are there for, uh, you know, when they are used, it's super, super important. This is perhaps uh, one of the most underutilized tools in the game. It's a hanger alignment tool for the rear derailleur hanger. Anytime a bike comes out of, uh, you know, a bag from travel or has been transported in the truck, I like to just throw this on the rear derailleur hanger to make sure it's aligned because that saves so many headaches if you're chasing shifting problems that you could have just addressed by simply aligning the hanger, you know, immediately. Um, in this layer, you'll see uh, it's where I keep my 3 8 ratchet. That's basically the ratchet that I use for all ratcheting stuff besides the very small things, which we looked at earlier. Uh, this is a socket that I use for rotor lock rings. It's the same socket they'd use, for example, on a SRAM threaded bottom bracket cup. Um, you know, snaps onto the ratchet. It's not, a, not rocket science. And that's how that works. Um, super precise. I actually had Abby make me a special one where they took the edge off so it sits super flush because our rotor lock rings are pretty thin. So that's a nice, a nice little feature. Uh, I also keep my chain tools in here. That's both the chain master link plier. This guy here, I use a KMC one. Uh, it's just to pop open the master link. Uh, what I have done and something that I would encourage you to think about is for tools that have a sprung handle like this where you know it springs open quite wide. Um, I've created a little spoke that I've bent to hook the handles together to keep it from expanding because the foam will kind of get distorted over time if you leave it sprung open inside the foam. It kind of wants to push the foam apart. So that's something I learned from my last toolbox that I've applied to this one. And that's a good idea if you can even just rubber band the handles. I thought that was clean and looked nice, but whatever you can do to keep tools from expanding within the foam is probably going to preserve the foam for longer. Um, next tool, great one, beautiful tool, feels good to hold as well as to use. It's the Abbey Decade chain tool, it's beautiful, um, and it has a piece in the middle called the mid plate which you can replace uh, depending on what chain you're using. So for example, the chain uh, that kind of caused that to be a thing to think about was the new SRAM Axis Road chain which uses a different roller diameter and subsequently doesn't align with the pin of most conventional chain tools so a new mid plate was developed to accept that chain and it can swap in and out. Uh, with the turn of a bolt, and um, that was a really clever one. Good job, Jason at Abbey Tools, for thinking of that one, um, and you know, for making such a nice looking tool as well. Uh, one of Abbey's famous tools that we all probably have seen if we're interested in bike mechanic stuff is the Crombie tool, um, which I've actually taken apart to fit better in this box. But we kind of all love how compact it is when it slides together. That's like a mechanic's dream, just to consolidate space in the box. So. Um, this is the chain whip that goes with it. This is the handle which has uh, SRAM or Shimano compatible spline for cassettes. Uh, I have a special one here that uh, has a 3 8 inch bit on the back um, which can accept my rotor lockering tool so I can do kind of full disassembly of wheels with just like one tool in my hand which is convenient and nice and streamlines operations and um, Jason was nice enough to make me that to give it a try, although it's not currently in production, so hopefully he's not mad at me for mentioning it yet. Um, what else is here that I haven't seen? Oh, this is a fun little tool that I've got a second one of now because I loved it so much. It's a razor blade. Can you see that there's like a replaceable razor blade which functions as the knife part? It's a Gerber tool and it's super light, really compact. It fits well in the box because the blade's replaceable. It can be sharp always as long as you have some replacements on hand and you never have to worry about a dull blade and um, it also just the, the feel and finish of that tool is really nice and uh, my friend John Searles uh, recommended that tool to me many years ago and um, I've had one in my box ever since and last but not least for this layer well first of all you don't know those pliers say no more okay last but not least uh, it's my housing cutting tool this year is just an open end 8 and 10. I don't really use a 10 for anything anymore, but the 8's good for the nut on uh, SRAM brakes, uh, which compresses the olive and uh, the barb from the end of the hydraulic hose into the brake lever. Um, so it's nice to keep light tools together, or tools you use for the, you know, for the same basic 
operations. I like to keep them together in my box when possible, just to kind of consolidate, you know, project-specific tools with, you know, within the box, kind of close to one another for ease of use. Um, so that's this layer. It's kind of the real gem of the collection. There's a lot of very nice tools there, and uh, special thanks to Abbey Tools for get me a few more extra tools to build this second box with that was a nice a nice gesture um, so last but not least this is the the layer I keep at the bottom in case anything spills so it doesn't get it all over everything else fortunately that's not ever happened but uh, I've known a few mechanics who've shown up to World Cups with you know brake fluid uh, maybe that wasn't handled or put back where it belonged by TSA or somebody and you can imagine when uh, a big spill occurs inside a toolbox, the ramifications of that. So um, I try to keep the messes contained to the bottom if there were any. Uh, here I have three different types of grease, a very low friction one, kind of an all-purpose contact uh, specific grease, and then like a heavy duty bearing grease. Um, so that's what I have uh, for grease here. I keep some very low friction oil that I use for race day only for things like derailleur pulleys, maybe bottom bracket bearings, um, things where you know, you can reduce the friction for the to the absolute limit. Of course, it doesn't last as long, but that's the magic formula to get you know every last watt out of those bearings. Uh, here's a lighter. It's useful in general for a lot of things. Two different compounds of Loctite. One's a thread locker. One's a expanding compound for press fits or you know assemblies where you need to like stop creaks or fill gaps like bearing pivots or uh, bottom bracket cups in the frame. Uh, I have three different sharpies. Uh, people who know me know I'm very protective of my Sharpies, that's why they're down in the bottom, uh, so no one can find them unless I'm around. Two paint markers, white and black, it's pretty generic, but um, useful and used a lot. Um, and then here we have tools that I use for suspension, um, fork service in particular. This is an Abbey Tools 24 millimeter socket, uh, it's for fork top caps, um, and then also on our SID forks. Uh, this is a, also an Abbey tool, it's a socket crombie, so it's again the cassette spline, but that's also the same spline pattern used by RockShox on the top of the SID fork to remove damper cartridges and air springs, so um, that's a useful tool. And then last but not least down here is a long 5mm T-handle, which I use for the breaker, uh, for, the, for the anchor bolts to break those loose underneath the fork legs and the SID to remove uh, the lowers from the crown and upper. So I keep those tools together because they are shared. Uh, and of course their corresponding ratchet tool is the layer above uh, which I showed you a moment ago and then um, I keep a little container for small parts I haven't filled it yet still imagining what might go in there I'm going to take some stuff out my other box and some fancy colorful bolts will find their way in here soon um, what else oh last but not least other two tools that I use together this is a bladed spoke holder and corresponding spoke wrench for DT Swiss wheels that we use um, so again, I keep those two together because I use them together and that makes sense and it's also where they fit. So that's the box you guys. Let me know if you have any more questions or want more clarity on how I did uh, anything. Ooh, that reminds me actually, um, perhaps the most asked question I got when I brought this here in anticipation. Um, how do I actually cut the foam? So if you Google foam cutting needle, this will probably be the first thing that pops up. Um, you'll have many options. This is an electric needle. You can see here there's a charger. Well, it's a, it's a plug and, uh, and a cord. Of course, it plugs into the bottom. Turn it on. Wait 20 or 30 seconds. This needle gets really hot. Be careful not to touch it, speaking from experience. And then, um, yeah, once you trace your tools, you just basically trace your own outline with this tool. Um, the Kaizen foam that I use is super clever because it's many very thin layers glued together to comprise each big layer and so once you go to the depth you need you can basically peel the foam away and get a nice clean pocket for those tools to sit in so um, that's a really tidy way of doing it you can also use a razor blade um, they even make um, kind of a I've seen blades that sit on sort of a ratchet that you can actually control the depth of the blade really easily with so there's many ways to do it uh, I think this needle costs maybe $15 uh, on Amazon so you can get one for not too much money and it really speeds the process up so it's probably worth it um, you know both in the cleanliness of the execution and the time saved to, to execute so um, I would encourage you all to use this time to organize your lives however that may look it could be in a toolbox it could be putting your dirty clothes in the laundry I don't know but 
um, use this time to do something productive and uh, try to stay positive, try to stay happy. That's what I've been doing and um, now I'm really looking forward to getting to use this thing. I hope it's only maybe a few months before we're back at it in full force. So uh, hopefully you see this toolbox again in the near future. And thanks again for all the positive comments I've received.